my name is Sahira, and today I invite you to join me for a slightly less physical and more cerebral side of belly dance. So grab your favorite hot beverage and let's sit and chat a while. Welcome to Belly Dance Conversations. I completely believe that you have everything it takes to create your very own unique and dynamic choreography. I get it. I hear you. Creating your own choreography is a super daunting task, but yet it is so empowering. So today I want to go through some of the reasons that you have for not creating or completing your own personal choreography and arm you with a few simple ideas that will greatly build your choreographic confidence. Almost every dancer at some point in their dance life is going to perform a choreography. Typically this starts out that we learn the choreography that our instructor gives us, or then maybe we learn the choreography that our troupe director gives us, and we dutifully perform the movements and the vision that they have when they listen to the music. I think choreography is a fantastic educational tool, even though this dance is historically typically done as an improvisational art. I think it's a great way for us to learn movement, to put that movement to music, and to create combinations in a really safe environment. It can also help me as a teacher teach my students how I hear and interpret the music, and hopefully eventually arm them with the ideas and ability to create their own choreography or even improvise. So choreography is an awesome tool but wouldn't it be even more awesome if that choreography was yours? I'm telling you right now, you totally have what it takes to create your own choreography. Many of us have tried and failed. I tried and failed the first like half dozen times that I ever attempted to create a choreography. But I'm telling you right now, no matter where you are in your dance journey, you most likely have enough moves to make a choreography that could be your personal interpretation of the music. Most likely, if you have not yet succeeded, you are really only missing one thing, and that is a methodology. How are you going to create this choreography? Typically what happens is we find a piece of music, we love it, we're excited, we want to dance to it, we're dying to put something down on paper or create a dance to this music that we love. So we put the music on, we get in front of a mirror, and then our mind, it goes blank. And suddenly we can't think of a single movement, let alone the perfect movement to put with this particular piece of music in this particular point in time, right? I have done that a million times, so I totally feel you. And if you've done that before, you understand how frustrating it is to come from having six months, a year, two years of experience in belly dance classes to feel like you've done some pretty good stuff, you've learned some technique, you have this piece of music and you literally cannot think of a single thing you want to do to it. I've been there, I've done that, I've got the t-shirt and thank God I've moved forward because it's a very frustrating place to be. So if that methodology, which I like to call the shotgun approach, like I'm going to put on the music and we're gonna see what happens when I just start moving. If that doesn't work for you, I'm here to give you some alternatives. If that does work for you, go for it. I choreographed that way for probably the first 10 years of my dance career, and then it stopped working for me, which is another discussion for another day. But I always say the more more tools we have in our, in our toolbox or in our hip scarf, as it were, the more ways we will have to approach the music, to approach the choreographic process, the less likely we'll get stuck and frustrated and the more likely we are to create an incredibly dynamic and unique choreography. So I'm here today to share with you some of those tools that I feel are exactly what you need to get over that hump and start creating your own choreography today. Does that idea sound good to you? If so, listen on, my friend. Tool number one. This is a simple but important one. Today, I am giving you permission. You have permission to create your own choreography. And you think, why do I need permission? I've already tried. Even if you've already tried, or especially if you haven't, a lot of dancers feel like they just don't have what it takes. They haven't been dancing long enough, they don't know enough moves, they're not good enough, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I hear this stuff. You guys respond to my emails and I hear you saying, you just don't have what it takes, or you just don't feel comfortable, or you just don't feel confident, or you just haven't been dancing long enough. And today I am going to encourage you, to plead to you, to implore with you, let go of that limiting 
behavior. Let go of that limiting thought process because no matter where you are, even if you've been in dance classes for just a few months and you have a handful of moves, putting those movements together in a way that speaks to you, to music that calls to you is a huge growth experience and it's gonna make you a better dancer and it's gonna make you a better listener to music and it's going to really encourage you in your dance and lift you to another level. So don't let lack of ability, experience, or, uh, or anything like that stop you from doing this. You have permission. If you have a belly dance notebook, I want you to grab it right now. If you don't have a belly dance notebook, find one. It's really fun to go shopping for your own belly dance notebook. And I want you to open it up and I want you to write in big, bold letters. I have what it takes to create my own choreography. I mean it. I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait. There is something so powerful about putting your desires down on paper, I swear to you. Like it's like announcing it to the universe and solidifying it in your brain and in your heart and making your intentions clear. So if this is something that you want to do and if you're watching this video, I'm guessing that it is, I want you to say it out loud or write it down right now. I have what it takes to create my own choreography because you do and I'm giving you permission to do so now. Okay, tool number two, and this is a big one. You need some sort of methodology. There's definitely more than one way to skin this cat and there's many ways to create choreographies. But if you haven't developed a methodology that works for you yet, or even if you have, the ideas I'd like to share with you are something that will help you get over that hump or maybe help get you out of a rut if you've been choreographing with a certain set of processes for a while maybe they're not working for you anymore. And if you've never choreographed or you've attempted and failed, it probably is this just that you don't have sort of a clear vision of how you're going to do it. You just know that you have a song and you want to have a dance. And like the from point A to point B haven't really connected yet. So I wanna share with you several steps of my methodology that I have developed over 20 years. I average in general about five to six new choreographies every single year some more, some less, different years, depending on what's going on, but over the last 20 years, and my methodology has changed quite a bit, especially in the last 10 or so years because of problems that I've had. So I feel like I've done a lot of the hard work for you and I've made a lot of the mistakes. Ooh, I've made some big mistakes. <laughs> and I'm here to tell the tale and to hopefully prevent you from making the same mistakes. So let's talk about several very important segments of my personal choreographic methodology. Idea number one, music mapping. This one is huge. This one revolutionized the way that I make choreography about 10 years ago and I have never gone back. The first thing I do when I get into the studio and I'm ready to choreograph a piece is I map it. So if you haven't done this, you're asking, what the heck is a map and how am I supposed to make it? A map is a visual representation of your music. It can take many forms, but this is the way that I do it. I literally put in my music and I'm gonna to listen to it about 10 times in a row in this process. And I get several blank sheets of paper. Usually I'll use lined paper because it keeps my thoughts nice and organized, but whatever works for you. And I listen to the music and I write down the counts along the left side of my paper. So every time I hear an eight count, I write an eight. I count to eight again, I write an eight. I count to eight again, you get the picture. I'm really good at counting to eight. Yeah, we count to eight, or maybe sometimes there's a four, or a six, or a 10, oh my gosh. And that's when I have to go back and make sure I did it correctly. So I listen and I write down all the counts on multiple sheets of paper typically is what it takes. And then I listen to it again and I fix where I screwed up because invariably I've screwed up somewhere as I was counting to eight and putting myself into a trance. Yeah, and then I listen to it again and I start to mark where these phrases are, a musical phrase, an idea that has a beginning and end, a phrase that the, the singer sings that has a start, a middle and an end and then they breathe and there's a musical interlude or perhaps an instrument comes in, plays a concept and then finishes, right? What sounds like the phrase to me? And typically for so much music, it'll be four repetitions of eight, especially if you're dealing with pop songs. And then I start to kind of mark, I put little horizontal bars where those phrases are. And then I listen to it again. And I start to identify what do those phrases sound like to me? Now, 
pay attention. When you get to this point, there is no right or wrong, right? Once you get past the counting, this is all your creativity. And this is a huge part in knowing that you are able to choreograph because they're really, for the most part, honestly, I'm going to say not a right or wrong. This is your interpretation. We, as Middle Eastern dancers, are the physical representation of our music. So only you can physically represent it the way you want to, right? So I want you to give yourself permission. Don't worry about right or wrong at this point in time because that is going to get in your way. Most likely it doesn't exist and it's not going to serve you. So you're going to listen to these phrases and you're going to mark down, what does this phrase sound like? Does this phrase sound like let's say, uh, an entrance and it's building and I feel like I'm running or circling. Does this particular phrase sound very lighthearted, like a joke? Does this phrase make you want to cry for some reason? So phrases could be identified by feelings. It could be identified by a spatial concept. It could be identified by a color. Heck, I don't care. This phrase is definitely purple to me. Go for it. Write it down. Yeah, write down all over this map. What is the feeling that you get when you listen to the music? Listen to the music again. What is the first thing that you hear? So in this section, I'm like, oh man, I totally hear the drum and it's going ta, ta, ta. And I'm gonna like write three slashes on the paper because I hear those three accents. Or in this section, I hear the canoon and it's going and up and down and up and down and up and down. And I'll write a little swirly line. In this section, there's a singer singing, I don't know what they're saying, I'm gonna figure it out, right? I'm gonna find out, but there's something so, so beautiful about their voice. I totally want to follow the singer's voice in this section because that is what jumps out to me and what calls to me first. This is a very excellent thing to do as you're going through and listening to your music because the more you embed yourself and the deeper you dig in your choreographic process, the more into the minutia you will begin to get. And while this can be interesting and allow you to draw out parts of the music that aren't what you heard initially, sometimes you'll dig yourself into a hole that you can't get back out of right? If you start to look too much at the minutia of the music, and then you can kind of come back out, look at your map and say, oh yeah, the first time I listened to the music, I really heard the flute in that section and that's what called to me. So I'm going to follow that, right? So we've listened to our music now, what, five, six times? We have our eight counts. We have our phrases. We have an idea of what that phrase means to us, how it makes us feel, what color we see when we listen to it. And we have an idea of what has jumped out to us in that phrase. Now I'm probably gonna listen to the music several more times and just keep writing, keep drawing. I'll sometimes pull out my colored pens. I'm a total like office supply geek. So I've got lots of different colored pens and I love to just kind of draw with them. Like what, what kind of um, shape does this phrase make? Does it go up and down? Is there a little curly Q at the end? Have fun with this. This is a very personal, very artistic, very creative process. And you are going to do it the way you do it, which isn't going to be exactly like how I do it. So I invite you to just get messy and have fun and really map the heck out of this song so that you now have a visual representation of it. What this allows me to do and what this will allow you to do is approach your choreography from a an idea of building blocks instead of saying, oh my God, I have four and a half minutes of movement I have to come up with, which is a daunting task on the best of days. You can say, oh, look, well, okay. I see now there's this, this entrance, which is kind of upbeat and shimmery and green. <laughs> and then it goes into this vocal thing. But you know what I notice? this vocal thing repeats three different times in the choreography. So I'm going to call this, phrase A, right? And then there's this kind of drum section that's kind of fun and fast with lots of shimmies. It feels like shimmies to me. And this happens twice. I'm going to call this B and you label it. And then you start to see so many of the songs we want to dance to, whether they are Western or Eastern, Arab or not, have a very, uh, a very predictable in a lot of ways pattern. And we can see this format, we can see these building blocks, and then all of a sudden, especially if you are a newer choreographer, you can say, well, look, I have three verses and a chorus that repeats four times and an entrance. So maybe that chorus, you're gonna make something great, you're gonna do it all four times. And maybe your verses are gonna be variations on a theme. So now you've choreographed one chorus, one verse with 
theme and an entrance and you've got the foundation of a really fantastic choreography. So this mapping process allows you to see your choreography visually instead of only hearing it audially, and it's giving you another angle at which to approach your choreographic process. And that's what this is all about, is having many different angles, many different tools in your pocket, so you always have a way to come at that choreography that's exciting and full of ease and full of possibility. So here's another huge part of my choreographic methodology, taking it back to the essence of the dance. I've mentioned it before and I'm gonna mention it again because this is sort of, in my mind, the most important, the most heart-centric part of our dance. As Middle Eastern dancers, we are the physical representation of our music. We are taking that music in through our ear, it's coming through our heart and coming out of our body. Do not overcomplicate things especially if you're new, especially if this is something that you haven't done before and you're trying for the first time, do not make the process any more complicated than it has to be. Listen to the music and move. Don't limit yourself. Don't make it have to be a belly dance movement. Allow whatever move that comes out of your body to be okay. Because when one, we live in a day and an age where we are blessed to be able to fuse many different influences into our dance. And two, I think that allowing your body to move in natural ways can be an excellent gateway into creating choreography, even choreography that is more traditional because it just gives you your instantaneous gut reaction to stuff. And that's really valuable. So don't remove that from your, from your vocabulary. Don't limit yourself. So really at its essence, let the music move you. Try to keep it simple. And what if you say, yeah, but the music comes on and nothing happens. You picked the music for a reason. It moved you here, even if it didn't move you physically. So here's another angle to take for your choreographic process. What if you thought of this not as what series of movements am I going to do, but rather what series of emotions am I moving through? Think about that. What series of emotions do you move through as you hear this music? And what if you allow yourself to move with only the emotion in mind? This may sound kind of weird, and if you're not a super touchy-feely or theatrical person, this may make you break out in hives, but <laughs> I'm going to encourage you to let that sort of ruminate back there and think about what if you use a more emotional map to help you generate movement ideas, yeah? And now one more big, big idea, and this one I think is, is huge. Once you realize it, once I realized it, once I gave myself permission to utilize this idea, Choreographing became so much easier. Improvising became infinitely easier. And so I want to give you this idea now as a gift with all my heart. And I want you to believe me that it is not the what that is so important. It is the how. Everyone is always looking for the perfect movement. What move should I be doing when the music sounds like this? There is no answer to that question. There are dozens of moves that you could be doing when the music sounds like that. And what is more important than what move you choose is how you choose to do it. And that is something that we'll look at in other videos. And I'll actually link to a video that I have released in the past where I take a simple combination and place it on two completely different pieces of music. And in, in my humble opinion, make it work. You can be the judge. You let me know, does it work? because I listen to the music and allow that to filter through my movement to create a movement that feels the music and works with the music, even though it was a totally predetermined move that I picked out before I even heard the music, right? It is not the what, it is the how. Do not get bogged down in the what, it will drive you crazy and there's no real answer. So give your permission now and I invite you to use whatever move you like best, to use a combination that you recently learned in class, right? If you don't have a lot of fodder for your dance, you haven't been dancing a long time, or you come up with a blank, grab your belly dance notebook, right? You've got your belly dance notebook, and find a combination that you've done recently that you have under your belt and place it on this music 
If you listen and dance while listening, I promise you, you can totally make it work. So there are lots of other pieces of this choreographic process, but for now, I want to share with you one more tool. So this is tool number three, enjoy the process. You're like, that's not a tool. You're just telling me to have fun, but this is supposed to be fun, right? So I think what often happens when we get bogged down in creating choreography, we start to beat ourselves up and start to think we're not good enough and it all becomes a total drag, right? And almost all of us got into this because we loved it. And whether or not it is a hobby or a profession, ideally we still enjoy it, right? So try to enjoy this process and that is more easily accomplished when you have lots of different ways you can go about creating this choreography. I want you to ban judgment from your choreography space. If you create something, record it. I know, it's so hard to record yourself. Record it, that way you don't forget it, right? And then when you watch it two days later and you're like, oh my God, no judgment, no judgment. I also am going to plead with you to not let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Do not think that your first pen to paper, your first dance on the camera is going to be what is the last thing you decide needs to happen in that combination in your choreography. It's an ever evolving process. And when you are choreographing, I promise you there's going to be times where you, where you change and, and tweak and you learn something in class and you think, oh my gosh, that's going to be great in that spot where I previously did this or where I didn't have anything placed. So allow it to be a fluid, organic process. Don't get bogged down, and I have done this a million times, and this is why I'm gonna say it. Don't get bogged down in like a 16 count segment and like over choreograph it and be and like bang your head up against the wall trying to get it perfect. Just put something in. And I actually, I have a default when I get stuck and I'm just like, God, I wish I could get past this part. I swear to you, I put inner hip rolls in, I call it a day and I move on. Sometimes those inner hip rolls stay. Sometimes they don't, most of the time they don't, but like another day, a better idea will come to me. So just let that happen. Put it down on paper, say that's what it is for now, and know that as you continue to move through this process, things might change as your emotions change, as the day changes. It is such an organic process. So give yourself the permission to allow it to change and morph over time so that you don't have so much stress, stress in the moment when you're trying to create that perfect choreography. So what do you think? Do you have a little bit more confidence that you can create a choreography today? Let me tell you, I completely believe that you can. If you're the type of dancer who's out here watching videos about how to dance and how to choreograph, you have the drive, you have the interest, and you've most likely been taking classes either in a studio or online, and so you have some movement vocabulary under your belt. Creating your own choreography throughout your choreographic, throughout your dance journey, is a very worthwhile endeavor. From beginner to advanced, it really gives you an idea of how you want Want to put these movements to music while it's beautiful and fabulous and wonderful to have someone tell you do this do that do it in this order and do it with these arms and do it with this tempo that's super useful but I feel like the flower truly blooms when it's you deciding what do you want to do and how do you want to do it and I feel like that will be the thing that connects you to the love of the dance so much more than anything else. And so I feel like it's a very worthwhile endeavor. Yes, it's challenging. Yes, it's hard. But I always say anything in this life that's worth doing is probably going to be a little difficult the first one, two, three, five hundred times perhaps, right? But it's worthwhile and it's such a beautiful process and it has allowed me as a dancer to grow and me as a person to grow in my understanding of my own personal creativity. So I hope this gives you a little bit to work with. I encourage you, if you've got that song that you've been listening to, that you've been wanting to choreograph, get in there and map it. Map it today or put it on your calendar within the next 24 hours, you're gonna map that piece. It shouldn't take you more than like 20 or 30 minutes or so to put a map down on paper and then just start to look at that map and see if it doesn't begin to generate ideas for you in your head to give you a framework to create your own exciting and dynamic choreography. Do you like to choreograph? Have you succeeded in choreography? Have you not yet succeeded? What have been your biggest stumbling blocks? I want to know. 
comment below and let me know and maybe I can make a video to address some of your bigger concerns. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like, please subscribe so that I can send you great belly dance goodies every week. I truly appreciate you being here and being part of my online belly dance family. Thank you so much and happy dancing.